Glad that you've come to the church at Benbrook. We love that you're here. And um, we love people and we love Jesus. So you're in a good place. If it is your first time and you're looking around thinking, wow, there's a lot of kids in here. We do this on purpose. We believe that families are super important to God, the family unit as a whole. And so we want, um, we want to experience God together. We want to do it together. And we want to let the kids lead us in zeal. And hopefully we can do that too. And we can lead them in wisdom. And so um, just such a beautiful picture of how the Lord uses generations. One thing we do together, actually three things we do together. Come on guys, help me out. We watch for God, we ask for Jesus, and we listen for the Holy Spirit. Let's do this one more time. This morning we are going to watch for God. We're gonna ask for Jesus, and we're gonna listen for the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit uh, just spoke to my heart this past week, just being at kids camp with all of our littles, and um, he just dropped in my spirit the word discover. And I thought, well, what, what is the actual definition? I, I know what it means to discover, you know, if we're talking about it in context of a sentence, but to discover means to find something or someone unexpectedly or in the course of a search. So I want to encourage us this morning that God is not hiding. He is not hiding from us. He is revealing himself to us and he desires to reveal himself to us. So in our pursuit today of him, in our pursuit of his presence, I believe that we are going to discover him in new ways that he's gonna surprise us today as we search for him, as we pursue him today. So let's lift our hands together all over the room. Father, we thank you that you are good. Everything you do is good. Everything you say is good. You are good. And Lord, today we want to seek you with our whole heart. We know that you reward those who diligently seek you. And so Lord, we are purposing right now at the start to seek you with our whole heart. You are the treasure and the reward that we're after. And Lord, today, we want to discover you in new ways. We wanna find you in new ways. We wanna see you and hear you in new ways today. Lord, would you show up and surprise us today with your goodness? Would you surprise us today as we seek you? Show up in signs and wonders and miracles. Show up in salvation. Show up in deliverance today. Surprise us today, oh God, like only you can. We just say yes. Can we do that right now? Just say yes to him. We say yes to you, oh God. We say yes. We know your plans are good. Come and do whatever pleases you in this place as we celebrate your goodness, as we celebrate your mercy, as we celebrate today your victory that lives in us. We celebrate today the God who fights our battles, the God who knows only victory and never loss. We celebrate today a good God. <laughs> Our God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. One more time. My God is so big, so strong, and so mighty. There's nothing my God cannot do. Come on, let's just shout of praise.
voice. So when I fly, I'll fight on my knees with my hands lifted high. No oh God, the battle belongs to you. And every fear I lay at your feet, and I'll sing through the night. And oh God, the battle belongs to you. Nothing 
thank you that you win every single battle, that there's truly nothing that's too hard for you. And Father, today we thank you for the power that is in your son Jesus' name. We thank you for what happens when we call on his name. You gave him the name that is above every name, and you seated him at your right hand and we are so thankful that he intercedes on our behalf at your right hand guys think about that the king of every king and the lord of every lord the one whose name is jesus there's no name higher there's no name that's greater he intercedes on our behalf at the right hand of the Father. And so today, Jesus, we worship you, we honor you, we bless your name. You are high and lifted up. There is no other who's more worthy. There's no other who's more holy than you, Jesus. You rule and you reign. And we say, let it be done on earth as it is in heaven. Your kingdom come, your will be done. King Jesus.
is risen.
is worthy. You're worthy of our praise, oh God. You're worthy of our lives. You're worthy of our adoration and our devotion. You're worthy of our surrender, our total and complete surrender. You're worthy of every trial and every valley. You're worthy, oh God. You're worthy, oh God. Jesus, you're worthy. Jesus, you're worthy. Jesus, you're worthy. You're worthy. You're so worthy. ever wondered about your purpose this is it this right here this is your purpose this is your destiny this is what you were made for Sing high. 
Revelations 12 says, The accuser of the brethren has been cast down, and they overcame him by the blood of the Lamb and by the word of their testimony, and they loved their lives even unto death. That last little part of that verse, and they loved their lives even unto death. They were willing to give it all for the cause of Christ. And when we sing that song, wow, the Lamb has overcome. John the Baptist said it, Behold, the Lamb of God who takes away the sin of the world. If not for Jesus, where would you be? Where would I be? Paul says we would be most miserable because we'd be lost in our sin with no hope, no direction, just floundering through life, thinking, I can figure this out. I can work this system and so that I can make this happen. And, and we'd end up confused, frustrated. But God gave us hope. The only hope, Jesus Christ. And so, Father, right now, we thank you that we can place our faith, our trust in you, that you are the one that is immovable, unshakable. You are the foundation that will not crack, that will not splinter, crumble, and cause us to fall, but we can be planted firmly on you. Because Christ, you conquered sin, death, hell, everything on our behalf. And we thank you. In fact, the way we should be thanking you is the way we surrender and live our lives each and every day. Committed wholly to not only you as Savior, but as Lord, which means you're master and controller of our lives. Because you're worthy of our praise. You're worthy of our surrender. You're worthy of our commitment to say, Father, here am I. Now use me. Very simple words that Isaiah said. But very profound, life-changing words. Just take me and use me and do what you want to do with me. And so, God, my prayer would be that as Holy Spirit continues to move in our midst, that we would be open to listen and to simply obey. Father, I'm amazed. We get in our vehicles and we drive out and the light turns red and we don't just run through it. We stop. Why? Because it's a stoplight. We obey. And something that simple is even simpler when God, you call us and say, just get up. Come walk with me. And isn't it amazing how we will choose? No, I'm not going to do it. I'm going to run the red light. I'm going to do my own thing when, God, you have the very best in store for us. Holy Spirit, I pray that this morning for someone who is running, for someone who is struggling, for someone who feels like I'm never going to overcome, I'm never going to see victory in my life, or I I don't know which way to turn, that they will determine today. Today, Jesus, I give you my life and I will allow you to begin to take the wheel and control of my life. No longer this bumper sticker, God is my co-pilot. No, if he's not the pilot, you're in big trouble. And so Holy Spirit, just lead us. We want to honor you and give you grace and thanks and just tell you, we do sing hallelujah. We do say worthy is the lamb who was slain on our behalf. In Jesus' name I pray. And everybody said, amen, amen. Go ahead and have a seat. Wow. I have to tell you, there's times when I, I go to step up on this platform and I'm, I'm treading lightly. <laughs> because here's the thing. This isn't a stage. A stage is for performance. A platform is for influence. And this platform is dedicated Hopefully that the Holy Spirit can do what he desires to do so that you and I can be influenced through the power and presence of the word of God and the presence of God to walk in obedience to him. That's what he's crying out for. That's why he died on the cross. So that we could take what he did on our behalf and let that presence and power in us 
walk in, and flow out of us to influence others, to fan the flames so that others might want to have what you and I have. The question is, did you and I live a life this last week that people would say, I don't know what it is that's on them or in them. I got to have some of that. Or were they more like this? The reality is the enemy is out to steal, kill, and destroy. And he wants to take us to a different level away from God rather than us pressing in to walk with the Father. Well, I'll quit preaching, all right? And so, hey, this is a special morning. Our students and our kids have all been at camp this past week. God has done amazing things. And so we called an audible and we're going to shift and we're going to allow you to hear what God did in some ways. Your investment, many of you gave scholarship money. Many of you bought cookies and coconut cream pies and strawberry cakes that we really didn't need, but we knew it was for a good purpose. And those dollars helped lower the expense for our students and for our kids to be able to go to camp. And so you have an investment. When you hear some of these testimonies, you can't just go, wow, that was pretty cool. But you need to be able to go, I had a part in that. And so we want the body of Christ to be reminded about how God uses this whole body to accomplish his purpose and his plans. Whether it's from the littles to the tallers to the olders, doesn't matter. And so whenever we give, and we get to give every week, it's about those ministry dollars that are given going in to speak to ministry that takes place within the lives of everyone within this body and beyond this. And so with that said, folks, it's offering time. Yeah. And so we have buckets on the, on the left side over here, my right, your left. If you'll take that and pass that across, our ushers are gather those up. And thank you again for your faithfulness as we walk through the summer. Here's what's been amazing. A lot of times in, in churches, there is this thing called the law of the two hump camel. In the spring, we're up. In the summer, we're down. In the fall, we're up. In the winter, we're down. Let me just tell you how God uses this body. It's the law of the we is on a hump and we ain't coming down type. That's the law. God continues to use you guys to give extravagantly and obediently. And it's because as he blesses you, it just gives you a heart of gratitude to want to give more and more. So thank you, thank you, thank you. There's a couple of things coming up I need you to be aware of. Life Walk Weekend is next weekend. Yeah. If you have not signed up yet, there's a sign-up sheet out at the welcome desk, and I want to challenge you and encourage you to do that. We're going to be doing ministry on that Saturday to the Benbrook community. In the past, we've gone to the food bank and LVT Rise. We're breaking from that on this holiday weekend to minister and to say, Benbrook, we love you, which we try to say that all the time, but we're going to be very uh, intentional about what we're doing for this community. So that's next weekend, the second through the fourth. Also, VBS is coming up, Vacation Bible School. This will be the first VBS the church at Benbrook has ever done. And guess what? Every one of us in this room have the privilege and the honor to be able to be a part of this inaugural Vacation Bible School. And this is an outreach beyond. In fact, Sarah told me a vast majority of kids that have already signed up don't even go here. That's, that's what we're talking about. But we want our kids to be blessed, but we also want to reach out to our community. And so what that means is a lot of us are going to get an opportunity to serve and to minister. And so we want you to sign up. And you can do that online, or you can see Miss Sarah, and you can get that taken care of because we need you. Also, men's breakfast on July the 17th. In the past, we've done them, and they've been right here. We're taking the men's breakfast on the road. And we're going to downtown Fort Worth to minister to one of our 
brother uh, in, in, the, in Christ, in his church. And so we're going to take breakfast there and minister and encourage them. But guys, we need you to sign up. That's on the 17th. It'll be from about 9. I would just say if you blocked off till noon, you'll be fine. But we need men to go. Usually we have 20 or 30 guys, but we need to know how many are going so we can figure out how many can serve. So we need you to sign up and get that get that taken care of in that regards. Um, I've got this thing here. It says the kids table. I don't know why I wrote that down. What was it? Yes. Okay. Thank you, Sarah. In the back up here, we have this little kids corner tables up there. You know, we're all about building the culture of family. We're all about kids being in here with moms and dads. And because we believe, and when we get to heaven, I don't believe they're going to go, now the preschoolers will go over here. No, I think we'll all be in glory right there together, praising his name. But if you have a child that needs a doodle and they're a little fidgety, we used to have a couple of those, didn't we? Yeah. And so we didn't have a kid's table. We had to bring them stuff, and they had to sit right next to us. And Debbie had these, these two things called these pinchers right here that she would use. On, on Angela or Bailey. It only took a couple of times. But if the kids need to go back there, we want you to do that. But here's the deal. One of the parents needs to go with them. It isn't a kid's corner free for all. So we're, we're helping you as a parent to walk with them and be able to help them learn and grow and listen to what the Holy Spirit is doing. Well, we had a great week. I don't know that I've ever been in a church where we did both camps the same week, but it worked. And so right now I've asked uh, Sarah and Ben to come. They are going to share. We're going to have some video in a minute. We're also going to have some testimonies. We're going to baptize, but we want to hear from them how this week went so that you can be encouraged to know, wow, look what God did with how we invested in that ministry and the lives. Because there's a verse in Judges chapter 2, verse 10, that says, and after this generation had been gathered to their fathers, another generation grew up that knew not the Lord nor the things that he had done. That will not be a testimony of the church at Benbrook, okay? Our testimony will be the next generation that grows up, if they choose not to walk with God, it will not because we didn't challenge them and encourage them and fan the flame within them to let God be Lord and master of their life because they are the ones that will be taking the church to the next level. And so Sarah, come on up, Ben. Come on up, she's gonna do it first. All right, ladies first then. Hey everyone. So our kids got to go to a camp called Carolina Creek down in Huntsville, Texas. And for four days, they learned about their identity, and which is really cool that that was the theme for this summer since it's one of our core values. Um, and so they learned all about how God created them personally, how he knows them personally, the things that break their heart, the things that bring them joy, how he has, he is intertwined in all of that. And it was beautiful. Um, so we had an awesome week. Awesome. Awesome. So if you sent a kid to camp, we catchphrased for four days. So if you are trying to give correction and your kid just pops off with something, I'm so sorry. Um, but it really, really was a great week of building relationships, learning about our identity. And so I want to give the opportunity for parents, leaders, and any of our kiddos to share what they learned this week, um, how they overcome, overcame things, and what God taught them. So do I have a volunteer? You can come. Um, 
what we did is we did this thing called the flying squirrel. It was fun. And we did another thing that was called the zip line. It was really high. And we learned how to um, we, we learned how to do about Jesus. Mm -hmm. I think that's it. Okay. Thank you. <laughs> so this was like the ultimate summer camp with zip lines and ropes courses and fishing and archery. And so the kids got to do a lot of things that they had never done before, which was also really beautiful. Yes. And just to piggyback on that, the things that they were doing were slightly terrifying. Like the zip line was 40 feet up. Granted, they were harnessed and supervised and very well taken care of, but all of our girls and our guys, some of them were on, um, they had the opportunity to do these things that were really hard. And some of them, you didn't know they were afraid until after they finished doing it. And they would say, wow, I was really scared. I was terrified, but I did it. And just seeing these kids really just overcome their fears and realizing they can do hard things. And one thing that I shared with our girls in our cabin on the last night was they got to do a zip line, which was really high. They got to do a ropes course that was really high. And then they did the thing that Moxie said, the flying squirrel, where you like launch off the ground and just hang there for a few minutes and then come back down. All of these things, um, the Holy Spirit just said, that's, that's the perspective that I want you to have. That perspective of being up higher. Come up here and I'll show you the right things. I'll show you the right perspective. I'll give you the right ideas about things. Instead of being stuck in the middle and just looking up, like just come up here. And our girls did all of that, just like champs. It was so, so awesome. And I just wanna say one more thing. All this catchphrasing stuff that we did all week, that is how we were listening for Holy Spirit. That was a practical way because every time there was a funny thing that was said, it was teaching our kids to intentionally listen to what was being said. So they weren't just hearing little tiny things here and there, or we didn't have to get their attention all the time. Come on guys, focus, let's listen. They were listening intently for these things, and that is a very practical way that we were showing our kids how to listen for Holy Spirit, which is what we do when we're together in this place and anywhere else. So I was super honored to get to go and hang out with kids and be a kid and do fun dances and all this catchphrasing and eat camp food, which I'm so glad we're not eating camp food anymore. But what an amazing opportunity for our kids to get to have fun and to really make some great friends and to learn about Jesus all at the same time. It was just an amazing thing. It just creates such a context for community. And even as they're gonna share even more, this, this is creating in us a context for fascination. This testimony of us saying, do it again, God, do it again, do it again, over and over again, do it in my family, do it in my kid, do it in my life, like all of these things. That's what we're gonna hear this morning as we hear these kids share, whether it's a cool thing they got to do or an encounter they had with Jesus. Come on, this is, this is the real stuff. This is life and this is what we do as community together. So one of the beautiful things um, that us leaders got to witness is our kiddos, whether we were fishing and not everybody caught a fish or, you know, we went to do the zip line and maybe somebody wasn't comfortable with it yet, our kiddos encouraged and cheered on every single person for four days straight. And there was never any bullying or knocking down, hey, you didn't catch a fish. They encouraged each other the whole time. So thank you parents for raising awesome kids. <laughs> I learned that even though we make mistakes, um, God died on the cross for all of us too. Those mistakes got fixed. So before we left, Sarah kept getting calls from Carolina Creek kind of 
concerned that there were all these leaders that were going to be coming and staying in the cabin. That's not normally how they operate. They have leaders that are there that kind of take over, and most churches bring groups, and they'll come during the day, but they just come and visit. Then they go stay in a hotel at night. And I mean, we're just not that way. Like we're a family in this church, right? And so we want to be actively participating with everything that our kids get to be a part of. Um, So we kind of pushed the envelope and said, no, we want to be there. We want to stay. We want to bring, you know, male leaders and female leaders that are in the cabins with our kids and, and are there and are a part of it. We're there to support you. We are there to love you. We're there for whatever you need, but we want to be a part of everything. And our sweet cabin leader, Katie, had an experience, and we did not know this. So I, I love the way that God works and how he used us as, um, as, a, as a group to redeem something. She had had an experience the session before us with a church leader that was awful to her and hurt her heart really bad. So she was really worried when she found out, oh, well, sorry, you now have three church leaders that are staying in the cabin with you, not just coming during the day. They're going to be there all the time. And you could tell when we got there, she was very guarded. She was very concerned with how we were going to, I guess, try to maybe take over or whatever. And we just assured her, we're here to support you. We're here to do whatever you need, whatever you need from us. That's what we're here for. You tell us. And the last night, the girls did something called Luminaria, where they sat in their small group in the cabin and talked through things that God had taught them, um, taught through things that maybe were scary for them or things that they didn't understand. And Katie got to share some of her things. And when we finished, she took prayer requests from the girls. And then we asked the girls to ask the Lord for a word for Katie. And we circled her up and we prayed for her. And at the end of it, I mean... There was not, like, she was crying so hard, but she said, this is the best camp. This is the best group of people that I could have ever asked for, and I'm so thankful that it was y'all. And so I love that God took us there. Whether we, whether our girls loved having us there or not, they probably would have been just as happy with girls that they didn't know that were 19 and 20 and maybe had a little more energy and needed a little less coffee. Um, but God... God used our group to redeem this little 19-year-old girl's heart that had been harmed by somebody in the church, and it was beautiful. Um, God, when um, I wanted a zip line, I was very scared at first, but God told me to start overcoming my fears and... I went down the zip line, <laughs> and, and on the flying squirrel, which was, which was a little scary for me, too. And um, <laughs> I got the Courageous Award at camp. <laughs> um, that's it. So Molly didn't tell us how she was feeling going to do these things, but she, you could see her talking to herself of, okay, I can do it, I can do it, I can do it. And she overcame and she was courageous and got the Courageous Award at camp. So that's pretty cool. All right, so I was with the boys It was a little bit of a different experience. (laughs) I thought I saw Preston. I see Matthew's parents. Oh, there's Matthew. So we had Matthew, we had Isaiah. Preston was around here. And I think the rest are probably recovering. Um, I wish they were this quiet at Lights Out because you probably would have got some more rest, but I'm just so blessed and thankful to have had the opportunity to go to the camp um, because uh, as the Bible says, you know, have have faith in the Lord like a child. Uh, if you haven't felt anything in a while, sign up for VBS and come and volunteer. Because being able to see these kids, you know, what they're going through, finding their faith, making a new connection, kind of in a bubble since it's a camp, um, but just experiencing life, it really changes you. 
specifically as an adult. Uh, and the one thing I'll share is when we were doing Luminary, uh, I was, I think we were talking about what heaven looks like, and then we were talking about how we could hear the Holy Spirit. <clears throat> and I specifically said, you know, sometimes, because um, me and then Mr. Andrew shared how, how we hear the Holy Spirit, and the story I shared was, you know, when you're driving down the road and you see somebody, either a broken down car, or you see somebody who needs help, homeless, whatever it may be, and you have that voice in the back of your head telling you, hey, stop or go help that somebody. Uh, for me personally, sometimes we're living more worldly and it's, hey, I got a, an appointment in 15 minutes, so I'll pray for them, but I got to go. <clears throat> and my nephew, Isaiah, kind of called me out and was like, well, yeah, but your meeting can wait. And it kind of hits you like, you're absolutely right. Uh, you're absolutely right um, that we need to be pursuing worldly treasures. So I, we, and then we had a discussion following that about specifically when you hear that voice, we kind of equated it to a flame. Make sure you're continuing to stoke that fire throughout your entire life because as we get older, the world gets, you know, bears down some more responsibilities and that voice sometimes get, gets quiet. Uh, but when you're around kids and you're seeing them, living life and experiencing everything, you kind of get that uh, regeneration in your own spirit and in your own faith. So it, it was an amazing, tiresome, but I would never trade it for anything in the world. So thank you all for entrusting us with your children. Anyone else? Like Chris said, thank you for entrusting us with your kids this week, or if you sewed into camp, thank you. Um, for the blessing of letting these 20 kids experience camp and build relationships with one another. And so we are grateful for you. And like someone shamelessly plugged, BBS is in four weeks, so you can register on our website. So now we're going to talk about uh, students' camps, but uh, first, uh, if we can, we have a video that I, that I put together. We... We did not get back at uh, 4 p.m. yesterday, so I had Saturday to be able to work on a video, but I, I could not imagine getting back and like literally, yeah, so <laughs> props to you guys. But I, uh, I was able to put this video together, so it's four minutes, four and a half minutes, but this kind of shows briefly what happened at our student camp, and then after that, we are going to give you guys some, some stuff. All right, let's go. <laughs> And uh, everyone just does their best down there to keep their faith as much as it, everyone's telling them to change and stuff. Uh, I pray that you give Israel peace um, with their um, neighbors. From the enemy. Lord, I pray that you give them smarts so they can help people like Christians to rise up. Don't 
come on. All right, students, come on up, come on up onto the stage. All the students, you guys are so excited. I know, I'm calling on all y'all. As you can see, these are our YFN t-shirts. It says on the front, give us the nations. And then on the very back, it has all the nations that participated in camp. As y'all saw too, the reason that it panoed first to Israel is because y'all, we got the nation Israel. What? I mean, whenever you're wanting favor for your nation, it's always good to get Israel because hey, what does this say in scripture? It says, that they are the favored people of the Lord. So, super, super excited. Yeah, y'all, God did incredible things. We are super pumped. All these guys got little banners that says, He is real. Yeah. And Israel is in there as well. So, what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna open it up. You guys, I want, yeah, let's let him sit here. He didn't get hurt. This didn't happen at camp. Bring your children to camp with us. It happened a few hours after camp. So, we protect your children. We try. All right, who wants to go first with testimony, huh? Sure, yeah, Juana, Juana's gonna go. So, this is not my testimonies, it's Abby's, but I was blessed enough to be there. So on uh, Tuesday, it was on Tuesday evening, during the evening service, everybody, all of our group was downstairs worshiping, and I felt like I needed to be at the balcony. And Abby was with me in the balcony, and we had worship, we had the message, and it was ministry time at that point. And if you know Abby at all, you know that nobody with like a physical injury ever escapes her from praying for them. So this time was no difference. We were in the balcony, she sees this guy walking around with crutches, and she's like, ooh, I'm praying for him. And like she didn't even like wait for me she took off so i was like chasing her down the balcony and it's on the other side of the balcony so we get there and he's already surrounded by like a bunch of like kids from his youth group and uh abby's like well i mean i have to pray for him so he's just like she pats them on the back and he goes excuse me i need to pray for him and then they kind of like all right like they make way she gets in there and she looks at the kids she goes hey i'm praying for you i need to pray for you and he goes, okay. So she gets on her knees and prays for him. And I have a picture of that, that he's, li he's literally, uh, yeah. So she's praying for him. And then all these kids join her in praying for him. And uh, one of his youth leaders, as she was praying, was pretty like visibly like kind of emotional about it. And he's actually the one that was taking the picture and crying. So I went to him and I was like, hey, is everything okay? Like, is it okay that she's doing this? Because he was not from our youth group. And he goes, oh my gosh, yes, you don't even know. Not a minute ago, I told this kid that if he wants freedom and healing, he needs to have the faith of a child. And then this child walks out of nowhere and starts praying for this guy, which that was so amazing. So we prayed for him, did our thing, and then left and left it at that. Well, this was a camp with like a thousand kids, so we didn't really get to see each other all the time. So this was Tuesday night. Wednesday night after service, we had some time before curfew and uh, they have a gym, like an indoor gym. So we were all in the indoor gym. Our kids were playing sports and whatever. And his youth leader comes to me and he goes, hey, have you seen him? And I was like, no. So I'm looking in the bleachers thinking he's there because this kid got hurt really bad at Nation Games on Tuesday during Nation Games. He got hurt so bad that they took him to the ER they thought he broke his hip, or I don't know exactly what it was, but it was some major stuff. And he goes, have you seen him? And I'm like, no. So I'm looking in the bleachers, and she goes, uh-uh, he's not in the bleachers. He's playing basketball. And I have a picture. That's the kid in black. Apparently, he woke up on Wednesday morning with zero pain, zero issues, zero anything, and went back to playing basketball and nation games and everything. So I took a picture of him, because, like, how awesome is Jesus? Like, Y'all, so good. So. So, um, I went to camp and I needed forgiveness. What? I see you. So, um, I went to the front stage and I was asking God to give me a sign or anything. 
And so as I'm praying, the main leader, the main singer on the stage came over to me and he told me that God spoke to him and told me I was forgiven. And so um, that was right when we got there. And then the second day, um, God talked to me and he called me towards ministry. And the uh, third day, he told me that he wanted me to be some sort of pastor. And um, the last day, he gave me my prayer language, and he told me, he told me that instead of getting on my knees to, for him again, he wanted me to go around and pray for people. And so um, as I'm walking around, I started praying for somebody, and a whole bunch of people joined in, and they all asked what we were praying for and everything. Um, she went through sex trafficking when she was younger, and we actually got her to forgive the person who did it to her. So. Who's next? All right, step up. Hi. Oh. Um, so, yeah, okay. So, YFN was the first really ever big church camp I went to, and, uh, so I've been a believer for about, well, I say believer. One of the biggest things I got from this camp was people told me there's a difference between acting and believing. And I think for the past five years, I was an actor. I wasn't a believer. And Monday, uh, Monday night was the first time I ever felt God for the first time. And it's this feeling that you just go numb. You can't really move. It's, it's just, it's weird. And then Tuesday night, nothing really happened. Just tried to listen as much as I could to the word. And Wednesday night was when it really helped. Um, when we were sitting there during worship, a guy walked up to me and said, hey, can I speak some prophetic words over you? And I said, sure. And he said, I feel like you've been through a lot in your life before and I just wanna know that God sees you and God loves you. And I just broke down. Because ever since I was about six years old, I've had a lot of anger and resentment and sadness inside my heart that has just left this big black hole in there. There'd be nights where I'd sit in my bed and cry and cry out to God, and I wouldn't get anything, so I started to question God. So hearing the words of God for the first time, not just from God, but from a prophet, from somebody who was sent to speak to me, was really, really good. Thursday night was the first time I ever answered an altar call and prayed for somebody that I didn't even know. Somebody next to me started crying, and I reached over and said, hey, can I pray for you? And so, another big thing I got from this camp is, I came to this camp, um, knowing God but not really believing in Him and just questioning Him and now I walk away from this camp knowing that He's real, knowing that He's there and knowing that He loves me no matter what I went through no matter what I might think He's always been beside me so okay so I got a couple of things so bear with me uh, piggybacking off of what Liam, you're Liam, right? <laughs> piggybacking off of what Liam said about acting and believing, more recently I feel like I've been becoming more of an actor than a believer. And from that, on Wednesday night, they were supposed to have a relatively popular speaker come in, but they had an even more popular speaker, the Holy Spirit, come in. He came in and just wrecked everybody. I mean, seriously, all thousand people were on the ground crying, in me, including me. I mean, yeah, he's just touching people left and right, and I feel like he just came up to me and smacked me across the face. <laughs> it was just a powerful moment. Part two, um, this actually happened after, like two hours after I got home. But um, I was scheduled to go into a surgery this Wednesday that I was seriously not looking forward to. I've been stressing over it for a while. And uh, Sophia here, she was talking to me saying that she had been praying for this, praying that it would all go well, have a good recovery. And about 10 seconds after she says that to me, my mom calls 
And she said, hey, your surgery has been canceled until the further notice while we look for a, while we look for a better, cheaper doctor. About four years ago, I went to my first youth camp ever, um, and I wanted to get my prayer language. I was really excited about it, um, but there was a lot of pressure, and it just didn't end up happening. And so for the past four years, I thought, you know, prayer language isn't for me. I'm not going to get it. It's not going to happen. Um, and then this week, the first three nights of camp, it was horrible, like, you know, when you have a hard time getting to church and you know something good's about to happen because you're getting a lot of resistance. Well, that was the first three nights. And then uh, the fourth day, I got my prayer language. Hi guys, uh, my name's Mackenzie and I don't actually go to this church. I go to a church in Brock, but um, I am friends, like really good friends with sailors, so, and I've gone to YFN for like, this is my fourth year going, and um, so I actually got to go with them this year, and so going into this week, I was really nervous, not so nervous like about camp, but just like being with them, because like I had like literally just met them on like Monday, and I'm like, hey, <laughs> but um, so I was going, and I was like really, really scared, because I was like, I'm going to cry. I'm afraid to like lift my hands during worship. Like I'm afraid to do this because like I don't know them. I feel like I'm gonna be judged. It's not my youth group. And um, I was really like welcome into this youth group. I felt like I had been there for like my entire high school career. It was like, I just felt really welcomed. And so I just wanted to say thank you for that. Um, I was really nice, but okay. So I have two testimonies. So my first testimony, was actually um, the year before COVID, my church went to YFN. And um, one thing about YFN is like, they have this term called wrecked for God. And if you don't know what wrecked for God means, it basically means like the Holy Spirit comes and he just like wrecks you. You like just start bawling your eyes out. You start like falling down on your face. And that year was actually the first time I ever got wrecked by God. And um, it actually happened every single night for me, which was really, <laughs> I'm not much like of a person that just like cries in front of like random people, but it, it happened and it was, I was like, oh well. But um, the, I think it was like the last night of camp. Um, I had really like always wanted like a, like a word over me and I had gotten words before, but they were never like for me. Um, and so I was like really just wanting one and I hadn't gotten one and we were in worship and it was towards the end and um, I had this leader come up to me and she literally, she spoke like just a simple word over my life and it was literally, he sees you as you are. And the moment she said that, I just started bawling my eyes out, um, mainly because like I've always struggled in my life with feeling like I'm not good enough and that nobody really notices me. And so that was just kind of, it just really hit me because I realized that I had a father that sees me and loves me as I am. And um, this week, I think I got, I don't remember when I got it. I think it was, it was Wednesday, yeah. Okay, so it was Wednesday um, towards the end. No, because Wednesday night we actually had a speaker. We had Josh Carter and it never happened. Um, all the parents came and they were like gonna see Josh Carter and he, yeah that never happened God had other plans but um, we basically just worshiped for like three hours straight and um, we're all there worshiping for like three hours straight and um, none of us like really knew what was gonna happen and they start playing the song on the piano and um, they started like praying over people that were suicidal and you know, self-harm and stuff, and I'm, I've never been suicidal, and I've never, like, self-harm or anything like that, um, but it was, when they were starting to do that, you just heard, like, everyone in the room just start weeping, and when you have, like, a thousand kids just all weeping in one place, it's really, really loud, and it gets really emotional, like, really, really quick, and I just started crying, 
I'm just sitting there and I'm like, oh no. Like, I'm just starting like crying and I'm like, what are the, all these youth groups gonna think of me? Like, I don't know them. Like, I'm crying my eyes out. All my mascara is going down my face. Like, what am I gonna do? And then like, I had multiple people from this youth group come up to me and just start praying over me. And literally, it was one of the best moments of camp for me was getting wrecked on Wednesday night. Um, my testimony <clears throat> was on Wednesday. Um, I saw everybody that night crying and everything, and I didn't feel anything. And I was praying over people and everything. And then Ben and Juana prayed over me. And then this overwhelming peace and joy came over me. Before, before. Okay, don't step up. Stay seated. Grab him the mic. Yeah, hand him the microphone. So right. my testimony was on Tuesday, and on Monday, I, was, I wasn't really feeling anything until I saw everyone praising without a doubt and, like, easily doing it. So the next day, I just closed my eyes and started singing and everything, and then I asked God, show me a sign. Show me that you're real. Show me something. And I, the slightest whisper came into my ear. He told me to walk up to the altar. I walked up to the altar. I started praising and everything, and then he hit me hard. And how I knew he was in my presence is because from standing so long, my legs uh, were painful. And from having my hands up so long, he just took all that pain away. I just felt light on my feet and everything. And as we, would, we said, uh, he wrecked me that day hard and the saying there was uh for preaching after worship they had a saying that said if a choir church is a dead church so if you didn't speak back then we didn't really know <laughs> that's it so i saw this El Paso bus in the front, and I asked Ben and Juana, what is an El Paso bus doing here? And they said, they drove from El Paso. And I was just like, who would drive from El Paso? <laughs> like, driving from, you know, anywhere is just long for me. Um, and I was like, I, and I came here, I came to YFN with the mindset of, it's a regular, you know, church camp. You, you're just gonna worship, and then they're gonna preach, and then you're gonna pray, and then you're gonna be done, and then you're gonna be, go back to the dorm, and then you're gonna party. But uh, not really how it went. Um, we had a curfew, but it was fine. Um, <coughs> and at the end, I realized I would drive from El Paso just to e encounter the Lord. And I had a testimony, I think it was Monday night. Uh, can't remember what his name was, I think it was Mason. Can't remember his name. Yeah, I think it was Mason. Um, he wasn't really feeling that he was right where he was. And I said, I, I wanted him to stay. I wanted everybody to stay because they deserve to see who the Lord and Jesus and the Holy Spirit was. Um, and so I, I asked the Lord, what should I do? And he, he gave me a verse. I can't remember what the verse was. I remembered it Monday night. Um, but it was a verse and it said, I spoke to my people and my people listened. And he was telling me to go up to him and tell him that he is worthy of staying here. He, he doesn't have to leave just because he doesn't feel right. You know, just because you know, people say that they don't want to lift their hands because what if people would think of them? Well, you're not going to spend eternity with those people. You're going to spend eternity with the Lord. And so, I think after the first night, he actually stayed. 
And after the second night, he stayed, and he stayed the whole week, and I was so glad. I'm Lily, and about three years ago, it was the first time I got saved by Jesus, and I w went to a kid's camp. I went back home, and I know kind of just like went back to my normal life and left Jesus. And uh, when I went to YFN, I was super excited because everybody told me it was so good, and I was so ready for it. And like Monday, Tuesday night, you know, I was just praising the Lord and doing what normal stuff I do. And then Wednesday night came, and uh, for three hours we had worship, and God just like hit me so hard, and I got saved and had peace and joy in my life. And during the end, God, like, I don't know what it was, but I'm sitting in my chair, and I'm just, like, flipping through the Bible and stopping at random pages, and I'm looking at verses, and there's just certain ones that pop out to me and felt like he was talking to me, and I was just writing them down, and I had, like, ten, and it, they just felt like they were for me, and, like, God was telling me that you need to read these and remember these and trust in these. And... um. Thursday night, God really helped me with something that was been burdening, um, bur I can't even say it, <laughs> um, overwhelming me my, for a while, and God just helped me get rid of that and bring me peace, and I'm now free, and I have so much peace and joy in my life, and it's, it's so nice, and I don't have to worry about anything, and I'm not fearful anymore, and I have no worry, and I just gave it all to him. Yeah. Okay, so I'm kind of the opposite of Lily. I was really scared to come to this camp, because I'm kind of shy, and I heard there was going to be a lot of people, so I was not ready. But um, when I got there, Monday night was like worshiping, same thing, and then Tuesday, I think it was Tuesday, is... Like, they just kept saying chains fall. That, I don't know, I just felt so free yeah. when they, cause they just kept saying chains fall. And then Wednesday night, that was, that was so cool. Um, I was just sitting there praying and I just started to cry. And then everyone just started to pray over me. And I just felt so free and like his love, God's love just filled me. And I just felt like an overwhelming of peace and joy. So I just I I just wanted to is has everybody gone except for Sophia? You're gonna okay, yes. Thanks, I'm here. So uh, I don't know if you can tell or not, you probably can't. I'm not one of the students, I'm actually a leader. So, <laughs> so I went to this camp whenever I was a student. I was 15 when I was saved, and I went to the same camp, and I got a lot of freedom. I came in with, like, this giant burden of depression and anxiety and hopelessness, and God just filled me and let me know that, you know, I don't have to hold on to that those things anymore. But I came to this camp this year kind of with this really high expectation of, you know, God's going to do all these great, amazing things because he did it to me. And I had trouble with this because for the first two days, it was kind of hard to see it happening. You know, I was like, God, why, why aren't these kids like on their face crying? You know, like I did that. Why aren't they doing that? And I was kind of like getting angry with God a little bit because I was like, you know, like, why aren't you moving the way that I think you should be? And I think God just kind of broke me down. I was like, you, you can't expect me to move in the way that you want me to. I move how I want to. And I move in the time that I want to move in. And so, you know, I kept hearing people talk, you, you know, you can't compare everything. You can't compare your experience with somebody else's experience. You have to wait on God, all these things. And I don't know if you know, but just hearing these testimonies, it's so good. God moves through these people, and he didn't move in the way that I thought he was going to or in the time I thought he was going to, but he did because he's so faithful and so good. And I don't know if you know, but Kylie, who just spoke, she never ever spoke before this camp she is so shy and just her grabbing the microphone is a true testament of god 
So all of these kids, you know, going in, it's really hard when you're a teenager. You put up all these walls and, you know, you kind of want to fit in, want to be cool. God just broke all of the walls at this camp. And so many of these kids are living free now. And it is so good. And it just makes my heart so happy to know that, you know, we have a Lord who's always faithful and he will show up and provide always. Yeah, so I don't know if you can tell or not, but I'm not one of the students here. <laughs> No, no. so leading up to going, Ben and I got to spend some time together, um, just getting on the same page, getting on the same heart, and one of the things we took away is something that she just talked about was not having expectations on God, but having um, uh, anticipations, you know, anticipating God's going to do something, not really expecting it. Um, and everything that you hear them talking about was nothing that was prompted by us, nothing that was prompted by any of the staff, they just did it just did it themselves. Um, one of the, the biggest takeaways that I have from it was getting to see um, different, you know, different elements of men, of men of integrity, men of honor, men of courage, boldness, of hope, of joy, and just getting to see that start to develop in each one of them, and in the, in the, in the ladies as well, but getting to see that develop in them, and then they start walking in that on their own um, was a really cool, powerful thing to just watch them start running with that. Um, but yeah, um, God has, God has been incredible, um, in their hearts and in, in, I know ours as well. So that's, so, you know, we've been, uh, as some of them have said, we've been going to YFN. Did anybody else want to share before? Okay. Okay. Just want to make sure I wasn't stepping on anybody. Um, but we've been going to YFN for, for years and, uh, y'all, it was, Whenever they're telling you about Wednesday night, I don't know that, like, the whole camp itself was themed around the title, Behold. And what they were, what they were doing is, is they want, we, it's one thing to know, to know about God. We can know him in his word. We can, we can, we can study about God, about the way that he moves and things like that. But there's a completely different moment. And, and I pray that this happens in all of our life. And I want to challenge you to seek it out. Because there's this completely different moment that happens the moment that you behold God. The moment that like you have this, you have this encounter deep within your heart, that the moment that you have this, you cannot ever deny that feeling. You know what I mean? And there, in that, that moment on Wednesday night, there was this dude that was battling with, they, they showed this video and he was battling with suicide. Literally, they had this, this moment where he was right at the edge of a bridge, anticipating jumping over. You could tell that he was wrestling with all of these things. And as he was wrestling with all of these things, it panos to like this white desert, this white sand desert. And the, the, the guy in all of his frustration, all of his anger, all of a sudden, he's walking through this desert searching for something. And the moment, all, all of a sudden, he gets to this tree that is burning. It's this burning bush moment. And what you see is you see in his eyes, you can see the flames that are burning in his eyes because he's literally beholding God. And that's one thing that as we were going even into campus that we were like, students, I want to encourage you that, that you know, I know that we talk a lot about God, but to, today, this week, as we're, as we're going, I want you to begin to ask God to show himself to you, to make himself real. He is real because if you only know about God, you're not going to actually, you, 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 it's not going to motivate you to change. It's not going to motivate you to be a new birth, to have your sins like washed away. It's not going to motivate you to live a life for the Lord. But the moment that you see him, you behold him, everything is new. Because then you're not just like you're not just looking at him as a as as something you know about. Now you're looking at him as a friend, as a savior, as a father who can like every fear is washed away the moment you know God, right? In this video, it, it just it showed that, and then you see like you, they get up there and and literally you see this this moment where uh, this guy he that was on the video that was in the desert that behold beheld God. All of a sudden, they pull out this, this piano. Y'all saw that white piano in the video. And he just starts to play it and sing about how good God is because of his experience of beholding God. Literally, this thing that flowed out. 
And then they asked this question. They said, how many of you as students have ever struggled with suicide? Everybody bow your heads. How many of you have struggled with suicide? Y'all hands went over all over in there. Yeah. People that thought they had no hope, of people that didn't know who God was. And it was so, like in that moment, all of a sudden you heard, and I'm never going to forget it. You heard like welling of a thousand kids just literally bawling their eyes out. If you don't believe me, you can watch, they have the video on YouTube, but you can literally hear the welling of people. And it wasn't a welling like, oh my gosh, we, you know, we're going through some, some traumatic moment or we're hurting. It was a moment of healing. And there's those moments whenever we just like let go and all that weight that we were carrying in our life just falls off our shoulder. And we just give, just give it to the Lord. And we just give it to the Lord. And that's what Y'all, y'all are pretty intimidating. And for these students to be able to share with you what God did, yeah. that alone should tell you that it was that it was real. Yeah. And it, it's powerful. I got we got one more testimony, and I think somebody wanted to prophesy something over us, but can we do it after baptism? Okay. So Sophia wants to tell you her testimony. We saved it for last on purpose. Let's go. <laughs> said something about how God's glory and love, it just, it's like a graph, and it just increases without, um, divots? I don't know. I don't, I'm linking. Um, and that's, my week was like that. At first, I was like, yay, I just get to praise God for a week and then go back to normal and everything's going to be the same. No. <laughs> My week at the beginning is really um, diluted, and just as it went on, as it got so great. <laughs> um, on Wednesday, like everybody talks about, Wednesday was great. <laughs> um, God touched me. <laughs> he, when when he, when the pre, not the pre, when the dude with the piano was playing, <laughs> the piano dude, piano. Man, <laughs> he was he was talking, and, and he was he wasn't talking. He was singing and playing the piano. And everybody was just weeping. You do not understand in the video, like because it's just coming from one, um, your phone or your video or laptop or whatever. But when you're in that moment, like you hear it all over, and it's it's crazy <laughs> and it's so touching. And then Ryan was not here, sadly. I'll be okay. Um, she she just came up to me and I was crying so bad. I was like, <laughs> and and um, she just came up to me and hugged me and it was it was God. <laughs> I am so glad she did that. Uh, she listened and then everybody just started praying for me and <laughs> I felt so loved because I've always dealt with not being loved. <laughs> Even though I'm in such a loved family, I should be so grateful. But like, <laughs> um, what can I say? <laughs> um, I'm blinking. What the heck? <laughs> okay, so everybody was praying for me, and I just felt so loved, and I have felt God for the first time ever. And I've always, I grew up in a Christian home with my mom and my dad, and it was, it was, I saw God, I saw him, I saw what he did, but I never looked at him. <laughs> I never, I never looked at him. <laughs> and I just, I just prayed so hard, and it was, it was, and then, that was Wednesday, and then Thursday, God, I used to struggle with being sad all the time, so, and God, he just, he just pointed out what the cause was. And he was, he was like, be gone with it. <laughs> and I slay it. And it was, it was, it was so great. <laughs> and I was just weeping all night and all day. And on Wednesday and on Thursday. And then uh, I was so scared to go home. I didn't want to leave. And Kayla, you prayed for me. And 
<laughs> it was, I just, <laughs> she told me that it was, it was going to be okay, <laughs> that over everything, God would still be with me, and he's still with me, and I get a prayer buddy, <laughs> I got my tongues, I got my tongues and I can interpret it, I can listen to it, <laughs> and she, <laughs> Amen. <laughs> yeah. what? Whoa, this is, this is a hot mic. All right. So one thing, too, is that Sophia gave her life to the Lord. She said, Jesus, yeah, legit, y'all. From Wednesday night, the moment that she got wrecked, she was on her face in every single session going after God. It was so powerful to watch. And as well, because of her decision, you know, that what's the next step? Obviously, she's declaring to herself, declaring to our church, and declaring to the heavens that she is indeed saved. So we're gonna we're gonna throw her in the tub. And she's gonna she's gonna get baptized. Come on, somebody! All right. So I want to challenge. I want all our people. Let's all get around her family. Y'all get around her. Everybody, let's get around her and let's just like pray and let's just believe this. Praise the Lord, goodness. How confident. I don't know that I've ever been so confident whenever I've had somebody get in the tub to baptize them knowing that this is the next step. Amen. You know? Knowing that you truly, I can't, you gave your life to the Lord and you will forever, ever be changed. New birth. Somebody give, take, her, take her hand, Joseph, and walk her in. Let's get in this. Will somebody record this for the family? Praise the Lord. Step all the way down here to the end. That's a, that's a drop right there, so be careful. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. All right. So, Sophia, upon the confession of your faith, just now, up on the stage, you are a new creation in Christ Jesus. The old things that used to try to possess you, sadness, whatever, hey, that's gone. Yeah. And that has no dominion over you anymore. The Spirit of God is on you to declare to the captives to be set free. And I just declare that over you right now, that the things and the things that God's putting in your heart right now, that you're going to begin to grow in those things. You're going to begin to see the fruits of the Spirit activated in your life as you speak out in the tongues that God's given you. And as you walk according to his purpose and you dedicate your life day in and day out man what a privilege to walk with you on this journey so right now uh mama or daddy all right just hold her nose hold his hand <laughs> you got everybody on me. we're okay being undignified this is raw and it's good all right so hold her nose put your hand up here on her nose and sophia Right now, we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bury with Christ in baptism, raised to new life. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord God. Hey, All right. let me just say this. The water's hot. If anybody else, upon these testimonies, Amen. upon... Uh, the, the testimonies of anybody else in here today, if anybody else would say that, you know what, Ben, maybe I didn't know the Lord, but you want to say that prayer right now, or maybe you would say that, you know what, I've said that prayer, but I don't know that I've actually been like, I don't know that I've actually taken this step of declaring it to all the world, for all the world to hear. Hey, this is open. Would anybody say that right now? Anybody? Anybody want to jump in? All right. Step on out. Jeremiah. Jeremiah Duvall, Mama and Daddy, are y'all okay with this? All right. Take off your, yeah, take off your shoes, maybe your belt, but leave the pants on. All right. All right. So, Jeremiah. Okay. All right. Thank you. So, Jeremiah, this is Jeremiah Duvall. He is a 
an awesome young man who has a heart the size of the world. And uh, as you heard him say as well, that he has a heart to serve even in ministry. If any of you know, if you have a calling on your life for ministry, the enemy will do his darndest to come after you. So I just declare that, you know what, as you begin to grow in the things of the Lord and he begins to speak to you and teach you the word and begins to develop in you the things that he has for you, that you know what, you will not grow weary, okay? And that you know what, that although you might fall seven times, it says this about a righteous person, he will get back up. And so I declare that over your life as well, Jeremiah, that you know what, you are a man after the, after the heart of the Lord. You have the heart of David. Never stop pursuing God, no matter how grim it might look, no matter how ashamed you might be, no matter what the enemy's telling you in your head, never stop pursuing Christ. What a, what a, what an awesome plan he has for you, dude. Yeah. Let's do yeah. this. All right. I start weeping. All right, do you want to? Jeremiah, we, upon the confession of your faith, have you given your life to the Lord? Yes. Then we baptize you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Bury with Christ about baptism. Yes. Grace to new life. Praise the Lord. Yes. Awesome. The water's still warm. Anybody else? Anybody else? you want it, step up. Are you want it, Waylon? All right, all right. I think somebody has a word. All right, yeah. Listen up. This word is coming from a man who walks with God and hears from God. And God gave him a word for not only all these students and their servants, but I believe it'll flow over into the rest of the house as well. Yeah. This is what I'm hearing in my heart. Young people, I've anointed and appointed you from the time you were sent to the earth. And I brought you here to Benbrook to not only be a, a, a light in the shining armor, but to show the world that it can happen here in Benbrook. That in this state where they have said so many things, out of them you'll hear the sound. You've been hearing the sound of heaven. You've been hearing the sound of glory. You're going to hear the sound of worship. You're going to see the sound of victory. You're going to see salvation. You're going to see revival. Revival is coming to this part of the world. And to the parents, you've done well. You've done what my word says. Train a child in the way he should go. As you've seen and seen the move of God amongst the young people, you haven't seen nothing yet because there's a generation that's coming below them that are going to have an open heaven all the days of their life. And then I hear this. Everybody goes to so many different places in the world to have an encounter with God. The Lord says, I'm coming to take up residence here in Benbrook. I'm coming to take up a home here in Benbrook. They will be coming from the north, the south, the east, and the west. They will be coming because there's freedom in the house. It'll be known. Everybody will sit down and say, I don't know what's going on, but I got to get there. Just as Peter's shadow touched people, in this house, sh your shadow is going to start to touch the world to bring them closer to me because you've been faithful with the little. I've opened up heaven for you. This is your day. Amen. Do we receive that? Yes. And so, Father, right now, we give you praise and we give you honor. It has been so good to be in your house. But, Father, in a few moments, we're going to walk out, door, out these doors, and right above us is going to say, enter the Great Commission. Let us go forth from here. Let us be the hands and feet of Jesus. Let us not be able to keep silent about the great things that God has done, is doing, and will continue to do in the whosoever's that choose to walk and surrender their lives to Jesus Christ. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Holy Spirit, watch over us. Go forth from here. Let us go as a mighty army for the Lord Jesus Christ. In Jesus' name, we all prayed and we all said, Amen. Amen. God bless you, church. Have a great day.